end of 2014, um, been sort of taking a break from music, um, trying to find out what I, what I wanted to do in my life, Yay. and and um, and yeah, and, and at the end of sort of towards the end of the year, we were really really lucky to have been blessed with the little one, and um, and right when she was born, I remember telling. So like I think I um, want to start a new band. Is that all right? And so <laughs> we had, I think the baby was like a month old, and Sarah's like, yeah, you, should, you know. I think her reaction is what meant that I was able to pursue it so um, like fervently because she she was very relaxed and just seemed like she knew that it was exactly what I needed, you know. Uh, Frank called me around Christmas time, I think it was. Um, we've been writing together last year, um, in 2014, for sort of various things. Uh, then he called me up and said he wanted to do something a bit more aggressive, I was out for it. Uh, and I wasn't really at the start. <laughs> um, so I sent him some old demos I had, and then uh, he put some stuff over that, and, and it was quite clear we were on to something. Day one. Yeah, like Dean and I sat down and he had this, he had these ribs and I had some lyrics and, you know, we'd sent a couple of songs back and forth and I was like, yeah, this will work. And then he came and he said, oh, I've got some new stuff. Let me play it for you. And he played it and I was like, I got lyrics that fit. Like, let's, let's sing it right now. So we hit record and that was, that was famous. I fucking love that. I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, to consider we started the band in in sort of January, February, and then kind of booked ourselves a show at a Frank's a Frank's tattoo shop for May, and then you sort of fast forward to now with the headline Underworld, um, and it's sold out in in something silly like an hour, kind of just sort of not really sure how it ramped up so quick really. You know, the very first tour we did, we played, we sold out about half of the shows. We had three songs out at that point. The second tour we did, we sold at every show, and that was like a, a week after the album had come out or something. Um, you know, I played play Reading and Leeds, and my kid came. That was, my wife was there, it was our three year anniversary, and but my daughter was there. And family is like, family's everything. Taking her out on stage was like a huge thing for me, and I'm hoping now that I can keep this band going, she can keep seeing those shows and just have that as a as a as a big influence on her life you know because maybe that will make her do something a bit more sensible <laughs> like not start a fucking band or be a tattooer she'll go and maybe go to university be a doctor actually help people <laughs> you know who knows If I'm honest, I never thought I would be a musician. You know, I couldn't, I still can't really play any instruments, you know, I've learned to play guitar now, but I was always just a better performer. I just wanted, to, I could be on stage and I just had a way of, you know, confidence to manipulate a situation for, for the benefit of me. And, um, but I never ever thought I'd, I'd play music. So I, so I always naturally wanted to be a tattoo. I could draw better than I could sing couldn't play an instrument, so I didn't know how it was going to go if, if no one needed a singer. But it works. It's scream therapy, you know? Like, you, you see those kids at the show and they're, like, fucking tearing a mic off you, and singing every word. They've got their fucking hand in your face and you're just like, I have the fucking mic, I don't care. <laughs> like, just take it away from me. Like, And then you watch them and they're, and they're, they're just doing exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm doing, you know? Just get it all out and leave it all on the stage and then... And then you see them later and they say, look, you know, thank you, that meant a lot to me. But it means a lot to me as well. It means a lot that I can write, write songs that do connect with people. Gallows was like how, how to lose a lot of stuff that's really important to you, you know. And what I learned in Pure Love was like how to fucking be a, 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 
a, a human being that people can get along with. And I started learning about compromise. And I started learning more about my voice and who I was as a performer. So it's, you know, in regards to where I'm at now, um, it's just natural progression. You know, I, I started with one thing. I moved on to something very different to see where, you know, I guess I was trying to find where I fit in, in music now. And um, and I think Rattlesnakes is, is that, you know, like suddenly I've discovered like, okay, well I can pull from all of these previous experiences. I think it took me to be in Gallows and in Pure Love to, to finally work out like, what, what do you want to do? Do you know what I mean? And that's this, <laughs> like now. Um, I think a lot of bands are, are, are quite scared to, to move away from the sound that maybe people like. But uh, hopefully from this first first record, people have realised that we're sort of doing whatever we want. <laughs> and hopefully that's what they enjoy about it, like well, the same same thing we enjoy. So uh, but I think there'll be a lot a lot of surprises in the music. But that's that's the way we're going to keep keep it fresh for ourselves as well. So. A change is coming, you know, and it's and it's. And it will always be coming. I'll always be trying to further myself, trying different things, you know, because that's what an artist should be. Like, it should, shouldn't ever be a closed book. Like, it's always should always you always you always want to read more. You always want to know more, and it's um, at least that's how I feel. So, what's next for the rattlesnakes? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah.